paesaggio fiorentino e agli incantevoli profumi delle colline toscane. Splendidamente confezionato a mano in un'elegante carta fiorentina di ispirazione rinascimentale. Prodotto rispettando l'antica arte italiana della saponeria, grazie al metodo Coltron. Nesti Dante rimane una delle poche compagnie nel mondo che continua a tramandare il metodo tradizionale di saponificazione. Tecnica, creatività e ricerca si incontrano con la nobile antica arte italiana della saponeria. Sapone artigianale, di fama internazionale, sapone di lusso. Per maggiori informazioni visita il sito www.nestidante.com There is nothing in this world that can make or break your day like a comfortable pair of shoes. And if you're a woman like me, then the perfect shoes are as seductive as the perfect full-bodied wine coupled with a smooth, dark Belgian chocolate. Mm. Or a steaming hot bubble bath at the end of a long day. <laughs> Let's be real, ladies. The perfect pair of shoes can even be better than spine-tingling, bone-melting, body-shivering. Well, you know what I mean. So, where do you get your perfect pair of shoes? Savvy Souls, where chic meets comfort at the intersection of satisfaction, swank, and trendy. Go to www. Dot for SavvySouls.com for 50% to 70% off on the latest spring styles or find them on Facebook today. We love your dogs and kitties. We love them. Yes, we do. So when you want to give a gift, a cake or treat or two, PamperedPawGifts.com is the place for you. Yes, PamperedPawGifts.com is the place for you. Whether building, expanding, or remodeling, the name and site work is Savino Contracting. Experts in demolition, excavation, sewer and septic tank installation, and site prep. Get in touch on Twitter at Savino Contract or call 508-989-0960 or email to evsavino at yahoo.com. Savino Contracting has what it takes to get the job done. Savino Wine Preservation System is wine preservation glassware. Savino is an easy-to-use wine preservation system that allows you to enjoy your favorite wines anytime without waiting for an occasion. Open any bottle with confidence, knowing that you can enjoy the full original flavor of Tuesday's wine on Saturday. For more information, visit us at www.savinowine.com. Today's wine, tomorrow. Are you an entrepreneur looking to get your business off the ground? Or are you an established business in need of a plan to present to an investor? Keljo Solutions can provide you with a plan that presents you and your business to others in an organized, professional package. With affordable rates, we have the plan to fit your budget. Visit us on the web at www.keljo.net and watch your business grow. Your search for love and companionship ends here. Join now at TalkToSingles.com for free. It's a new, high-quality, internet-based personal dating service that allows single men and single women to meet and engage in electronic conversation in the safety and comfort of their home computer. It's a dedicated team providing online dating services for successful matchmaking. Join today absolutely for free and start connecting with singles in your area now. And check out the Android app. Go to TalkToSingles.com. That's talk number two, singles.com. All right, we're back. We're rocking and rolling with Beth Bannister on the Ring Central Celebrity Hotline. Just a reminder, tonight's show brought to you by E24.com. It's like having a food truck in your pants. Download the app for your Android or iPhone. Put in a zip code. They will find a restaurant in your area that delivers straight to your house. And do it all on E24.com. Welcome back to the show, Beth Bannister of Second Right. We're unable during the commercial break to get Ryan Lee back on here. I have no idea what's going on with his Skype, but it's uh, it's not working. 
horrible. I, I think I think the left wing the left wing agenda got a hold of his Skype feed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will try to get him back on the show uh, here later because uh, he's always got some great insight. He's one of the younger generation. He's uh, 20s, and uh, he's he's the next generation. I'm in, I'm almost 50, so I'm almost 30. So you're in the 20s too. So you <laughs> <laughs> don't be in a hurry. <laughs> I don't don't know because look, I have four kids and. According to my fiance, for each kid it counts as ten years. Ah. So I'm up there. So you're like eighty. <laughs> <laughs> so tell my daughter, you know, mom's forty mom's turning forty five and she thought she like he was serious. So one day when they were doing their school project for Mother's Day, it like asked how old your mom is, she wrote fifty. Um <laughs> and all this stuff and I was just reading it, I was like, Are you serious, Hannah? Oh, man. oh Lordy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ah, from the mouths of babes. Well, I tell you, I'm going to get off the Ferguson thing here. This, you, you know, the point being, folks, is educate yourself. Don't, don't get emotionally involved in something without knowing 100 percent of the facts. Uh, I don't know the officer personally, uh, but I, I, I'm going to tend to believe just from my experience that especially with the lack of respect that is shown to uh, police officers by the younger generation that uh, uh, it's not too far out of the realm of possibility that this six foot four 270 pound man uh, overpowered a, a five foot seven 140 pound uh, police officer and punched him in the face and that's what you know you you, you punch somebody in the face <laughs> you punch a cop in the face all bets are off i'm sorry all bets are off i mean that's you know you, you can't sit back with days and weeks of speculation saying well the officer used excessive force if somebody's punching me in the face and i'm a police officer my first thought is not my ego it's protect my gun because every yeah. every fight with a cop, whether the subject is unarmed or not, is a gunfight. Yeah, and it's a fight for control of that weapon. And 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 it and it's if it comes out that Michael Brown was overpowering this officer, tried to get his gun, his gun went off, or he got shot in the process of trying to get the officer's gun. All bets are off. Yeah. It's not about cigars or walking down the middle of the street anymore. Uh, but either that information is being suppressed, which very well could be, since uh, Eric Holder uh, already wanted to suppress some of the evidence, uh, and that's confirmed that he that he wanted to suppress it. Now he's down there, probably doing damage control, probably directing the propaganda to tell us how to think, and it's just it's sad. Strange world we live in, and you always wonder, well. You know, what could this be or what could this be? And that's what my mind always races is, okay, well, if they're doing this, like, what's what's really behind it? What are they really trying to get out of this by sending Eric Holder in? Well, it's high profile, so everybody's going to want to milk it for their, for their own uh, personal use or their own personal propaganda. So the president, of course, is going to jump all over it. Uh, so that's that's that. And, and, of course, the more controversy and the more division there is, the better it is for the politician because then the politician – see, politicians make their life by convincing us that they solve problems. Well, in order to be a problem solver, you have to have a problem. If you don't have a problem, there's no problem to solve. Yeah. So, so how do you solve how – how do you create problems? Well, it's simple. You create issues that turn into problems. Exactly. That's why, I mean, when you look at the news and you look at everything that they report, it's not, oh, a firefighter saved, you know, this today. It's, oh, an armed man did this, and it's everything's about guns, and everything's about race, and who killed who. It's, it's just a sick world we live in, and at the media dividing and 
conquering, really. It's, you know, everything, if you turn, because that's what people respond to. You post a story that's a good story, you know, full of good information, not that many people are going to be interested in it. Now, you throw up a story about how, you know, a black man was shot by a police officer, everybody's going to be a critic. Everybody wants to get their two cents in. Oh, of course, and then everybody has their opinion. About how cops yeah, are bad, cops are out of control, <laughs> and see, this is the hypocrisy of the of the anti gun. I was just going to get that before the break. The same people that are vilifying this police officer, that want this police officer to show himself, be a man and show. First of all, be a man and show yourself so we can beat the crap out of you, based yeah. on partial information that's been already been dis- some of it's already been proven not to be accurate. That, that, that doesn't make any sense, too. Uh, the same ones that, that, that'll that sit there with all the righteous indignation and say, you know, Beth, Mike, you can't own that gun because that's an assault weapon. Well, first of all, I don't know what an assault weapon is. I don't own an assault weapon. Uh, yeah. I own a semi-automatic rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of those. With a, with, what are we talking about? With, with a, with a, yeah, you with, find with, that funny. Which is magazine fed and uh, has a dot sight. But hey, you know, I, because to me, when you assault something, you attack it. Now, if I attack something with my pistol, is that now an assault weapon? What if it's a revolver? Is that an assault weapon? <laughs> I, I just don't get the thought. Pro- anyway, the same ones that tell me I can't own that. Because I don't need it. Me, uh, me, liberal anti-gunner, dictate to you what I think is best for you. Yep. Because police officers should only have guns. That's what happens. If someone's breaking into your house, go cower in your in your closet, hope they don't find you, and call the police. As a police officer, I I tell you, that the, the sinking feeling in the gut of my stomach when I'd get a call... And it would be all the way across my district. So I know I'm like 20 minutes away. And it's an assault with a knife. Or it's an assault with a gun. Or it's an, you know, a group of people. For, I just know when I get there, there's either going to be a dead body. Or there's going to be someone needing an ambulance. or And I'm coming as hard as I can. But it's going to take me 5, 10, 15 minutes to get there. You know, when seconds count, we're minutes away. If someone's busting in my office door right here. Uh, they will be met with the appropriate force. I didn't exactly. invite them in my house. They're not coming in here for any other reason but then to commit a felony, which is burglary is a felony. And uh, they're probably things aren't going to turn out too well for them, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so, my my question is: when somebody commits a crime, and when it goes through the judicial process, and you know their witness is an accomplice to the crimes that they were committing. I mean, really, in a judicial view, this man's not going to have credit, so why is he going to get credit from the media? Of course not. Uh, and, and these same folks that tell us that we can't own guns and that we need to more control and more laws that don't affect anybody but us are the, now the same ones that are complaining that the cops are out of control and they're all militarized. Well, what do you want? Do you want do you want militarized police officers that have all the guns, or uh, with the, with an unarmed citizenry, or do you want to be on equal footing so that the police officers can be held accountable? Exactly, and it, and it's hard. And it, it, I hate to say that too, because like I said, you know, our policemen, the second they get home at night, they're us. I mean, they're part of our community. So just as and there's a lot of police officers out there that are very pro 2A. They don't want us to get disarmed because they know better. They know. So that's what's hard when you say, you know, we need to be on that equal footing as them because I, I know personally a lot of officers that if it came down to, you know, taking arms from people, they would throw their badge and say, I'm not doing that. I am not going to take guns. I'm not going to go door to door and confiscate. They won't. Yeah. It was best. It was it was best put this way, uh, and, I, and I, of course I read this on a, a Facebook. But it was brilliant. Telling me that you don't want to take my guns, just certain guns that you don't believe I should have. Well, re- Republican. 